company that uh, is mainly invested in um, making people adopt new smart tools. So that's going to be also the, the primary focus of my, uh, my session. So what I want to take you through is talk about the process of co-authoring using smart tools in, in Office 365, focusing mainly on Teams, OneDrive, um, and uh, Office applications. Um, just to set the stage, what I'm talking about when I'm talking about co-authoring documents is the process of a group of people um, being more efficient in using the tools with the goal, obviously, also to improve things. So it's not just for the sake of using Office 365, it's to improve both the whole time that they're going through in creating documents collaboratively together, um, but also learning about some features that are going to make the creation maybe easier. Um, also the reviewing by peers, having a look at how can we do things differently um, or, or more effectively. Making sure that we can actually find files easier, uh, which has a lot to do with the version management in fact. Um, and maybe, that, that, that's actually my assumption, if we are becoming more skilled in all these things, I think the quality of your documents are also going to be better, not just in a technical aspect, but I think it's going to also improve the business uh, as a result of being better in using the tools, getting your messages across maybe better. Co-authoring documents is about sharing documents, about creating content together in a smart way, and um, there are some really cool new smart things in, in Office 365 nowadays about the review process, about doing version management right, information workers and IT professionals. So you'd think those that are a bit smarter in digital literacy are actually spending an average of four and a half hours a week looking for documents. But it gets worse because half of that time they're not even finding it. That means one out of five employees is basically not showing up at work. Or one day a week, I'm not showing up at work. That's how, how, how much that translates to, 20% of the time. That's, that's, that's frightening, right? And I think it has to do with the habit that we saw earlier. Now, this is my, my, my field of, of, of expertise or, or passion, as I would say it, is that it's all about habits. So. Yeah, we've got these great new tools that allow us to do things way better. And, and in fact, SharePoint document library versioning and also the co-editing real-time, that has been around for a long time. But people are not catching up. And it has to do with the speed that technology changes. So what I want to help people with, when I help organizations in their use adoption, is to change, to change the way they work, thinking about their daily work practices, and I'm, call, and I'm calling it rethinking the way you work, from the way you work now, using WhatsApp, using file shares, a lot of Outlook, to the way you work new, it's like, oh, all these massive new tools, we've got OneDrive, we've got Teams, and all its features in there. One of the main things that is in this shift uh, from the way we work now to the way we work new is also about a change of mindset. I'm calling it from send to to share with. People need to shift their mindset from a I'm going to send it to you to a I will share it with you. I think that's going to be the first step where someone says, you know what, instead of picking an email uh, with a file from some folder and shoving it, whether they want it or not, to other people, who are then edited it with their own specific way, sending it back to me and I have to do all that work. We need to rethink that and say, you know what, there's a group space, whatever that space may be. I'm not focusing right now here on, on a specific tool, but a space where we go to rather than that we send the document somewhere else. It's not the document that goes places, but we go to the same place where the document is. So we stick it in the group could also still be folders, we stick it in the group and those who may access that group can have their review on it, edit it 
and we just keep it the same file name. It doesn't change report v1, v2, or ROM, or whatever. I also would like to introduce something that we use in organizations as well, which is me, we, and key. It's a model we use to make it easier for, for employees to understand what am I using when. So, we are using three areas to help explain to employees what tools you are using when. If it's all about my personal productivity, I've got my office, I've got my OneDrive, that's my file. If I want to have offline access, that's, that's something that I may want. And that's something that, yes, from an efficiency perspective and a digital literacy perspective, it'd be good to use OneNote for your digital note-taking rather than using paper notes. But it doesn't hurt the organization massively if I take my personal notes on paper. So there's a productivity gain, yes, but it's not, the effect on the organization is not huge if I choose to do it differently. That becomes different when we are a group. Because if we decide as a group that we need to take notes of our meetings, for example, it's not gonna be handy if we all do it differently. So we need to have some agreement in our group. But it doesn't also have to be very heavy, because we've seen, we've tried for years to push SharePoint sites to people for their day-to-day -day collaboration for years, and I think it didn't work because it was too much overkill for the day-to-day -day stuff. I think Teams jumped into that gap, where it's much easier for that. And then there's, of course, also the, the area where we say, you know, this needs to be structured, and, and I need to know that this is the final thing, published thing, and people cannot change it. I need to have maybe a navigational structure for that, uh, where we need to have a, a different group of content editors and readers. And that, that's what I would call key. And particular apps fit one or, one or the other area uh, better. And it's also a model that we use for when there's new apps that you can evaluate. So, okay, where, where, if we are using it, where are, where are we positioning it? We also help with using this same model for different productivity scenarios, personal, team, and organizational productivity scenarios. And this co-authoring documents is one of them. Co-authoring documents we position as a we area where as a group, you want to be agile, you want to be quick, easy for creating your documents. The co-authoring documents is basically talking about the document going through a life cycle. It's not going places necessarily, it's going through a cycle from draft to collaborate to publish. You may choose different areas, starting OneDrive or starting Teams, and maybe end up in SharePoint for the publishing part, when it's all good and done, and now we need to publish to a bigger audience. But it's more about the state, status of that file and what kind of features and tools are you using in that part. And I'm always saying that we should not be using OneDrive so much. I know people love OneDrive, because it's easy, but it's actually not good for team productivity. So what I see with your terabyte of, of uh, possible storage is a disaster. How could it be that you have one terabyte of work that is just for you? Yes, of course, I know you can share, but I'm going to show you later that that's not the easiest way to be doing group collaboration around files. So I prefer to actually start, if you can, if it's not too sensitive in privacy sense, to start, for example, in Teams.